Good morning, folks. Hey, old fisherman's back on Lake Monticello. We're gonna try to catch a crap here on the brush pile right here. I haven't been over here in a while on the brush pile, but we're gonna try to catch us a crap here on this particular brush. Don't know if we can, but we show sure is the devil gonna try. Glad y'all could be with me on another episode of Loving Life. And uh, hey, we've been perch fishing. We got about 30 something. They kind of slow. But I'm gonna try to catch some crappies the rest of the day. Get another hour or so fishing. We're gonna see if we can't focus on some jumbo magnum specks or crappy or crappie. Whatever y'all wanna call them. Right here on Lake Monticello. Hey, let's see if we can catch one. We got a brush pile about 25 foot down and it's a little bit of uh, not much this old, old brush. Just a little bit of old cedar tree down here. And sometimes there'll be a couple crabs here, sometimes there won't be, and sometimes there'll be a bass on it. You never know what you're gonna catch here. But it's a good place to catch a crappie like this right here. Huh, it's a good place to catch a crappie like this right here. I don't know what we got, we might have a perch and we might have a crappie. Oh, we got a crappie, look at that. Huh, what'd I tell you? Already got one, look at that. Slab crappy, hey, probably about a pound. Uh, he's a nice one. I'll show him to you up close. We got him on a uh, Bobby Garland monkey milk with a 30 second head with a dog on number seven lid above it. I like the number seven lid because they're a little bit deeper than getting down there to the crap. This is what we after right here. Hey, that's what we after right there. <coughs> Sometimes this late, the crappy fishing is better after, after the sun gets up really good. When they get on these brush, if it's sunshiny, they'll pile around these brush for a little cover. And uh, hey, you can catch them better with the sun out than you can uh, on a cloudy day in this deep water conditions over here. A little bit different than a lot of lakes. Okay, I'm gonna fix that little jig. I want it straight. Got to have it straight and it ain't looking really good right now. I'm gonna have to re rehook this baby. About to tear it up and have to get a hunt another one. I don't know where nothing is. I just picked this one out the old pack. Out the stray pack of jigs. I don't even have a pack of these. But any kind of light colored jig in this clear water and a, probably a light green would work really well. We're gonna get back up here and see if we can get another one. That didn't take long. That's what happens when you can pinpoint crackers vertically on a brush pile. You can get right on it and you put that jig right on his head. If you know what depth they are and, and practice how long you let your line out each time. And the way I like to do it, and I've said this before, is I go five, I count that as five, up again 10, 15, about 17 foot deep right there. Okay, the brush is, the, 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 the bottom is 27. The brush is probably about 18 or 20, 25. It's just laying down. That, that, oh, Lord, I broke my dog gone. Oh, what happened? We broke a line. I set the hook and broke my line. No, I didn't, I got him. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I don't know what happened. The line flipped over or something, but we got another crap. Huh, I don't know what happened. It must have, bell must have flipped out. Well, we got a jumbo magnum crappy right here. Hey, right off the bat, look at him. They might be in here, people. I don't want him. I thought I broke my rod there for a little bit. Hey, hey, but good thing about it, it went broke nothing. See that? That's what you can do when you can zero in on a spot. Right there, and catch them kind of fish. That's what I'm talking about, people. The old fisherman. This is what I used to do all the time over here. Hey, maybe I need to start back. I got all them perch on my mind, but there's no guarantee I can't catch crackers over here like I used to. Anyhow, hey, let's get back up here. This is getting good to the old fisherman. I'm loving this. And I told y'all before, get a little slime on your fingers from that crap and rub it on it. I'm telling you, when you get on them, it'll make them jokers bite better. I don't know what it is. I can't tell you what it is. I think it's the smell. Okay, we got to take it off spot lock. 
And what we want to do is put this trolling motor on about two, barely moving. We don't want to do a bunch of rookers. Water's clear. Now watch this now. We're going to move back up this brush. We'll get back up here to where we need to be. And we're going to do the same thing again. I'm going to put it out two times and just a little bit. Put it about 17 foot deep. Okay? Now, getting back up here to where the hole is. All right, apparently we got a few out here. Ain't nobody bothered this place, I promise you. Now, five, 10, and a little bit. Well, I need to go 15. That's 15, 17. So that's 17 right there. Okay, 17. I don't know how many are gonna let me catch. They'll, they'll quit uh, on this lake. They used to bite, keep biting until you catch as many as you want to. But here in the last couple of years, when you try to catch them, they quit after a couple. But uh, hey, we caught two, and I see some more down there. They done, what they done, the whole school done pushed down at the bottom. I might have to go a little deeper to get to them. I might be fishing above them, which, which you want to always fish above a crappy anyhow. And uh, that's what you want to do. If you don't, his eyes are top of his head. He's looking up. If he's laying right on the bottom, you'd be a foot off the bottom, you'll catch him. But if he's suspended, you got to be above him. All right? I see a school of crappies down on the bottom. I'm going to let that one more time. We might get hung up, but I'm going to get a little deeper. I think they went down when I caught them too. I think I spooked them down. Let's see if we can get another. There's some there. They can't fool me. I see them. Getting them to bite now after I done caught two is going to be the problem. I think when I jerked that thing a while ago, that my bell is, it, that bell's weak. The little spring in the bell's weak and it flipped back. I thought I broke my rod. There you There you There you There's a nothing. That's number three. That's number three. Uh-oh, that ain't a crappy. That's a dab blame white perch. Huh? That's a dab blame white perch. I want a crappy white perch. I ain't throwing him back on this crappy brush pile, I can tell you that. I ain't spooking this fish off. One. So whatever size I catch on this brush pile, they ain't going back. Two, three. Not while I'm catching them. All right. There might be white perch I see down there on the bottom. Your crappies might be up. White perch might be down. I went down to the bottom and caught a white perch. So I might have to hold back up a little bit to catch the crappies. We got a pile of something down there on the bottom around this brush. I mean a bunch of them. Probably white perch. Probably white perch and crappies mixed. One of the few times they'll mix is on a brush pile. That's why I never catch no crappies out in the middle. Them crappies ain't coming around them perch out in that middle. They just don't do it. Not on this lake. They might some lakes. I don't think they like to blend together. To be honest with you. Now right there's the brush. I don't want to get too deep because I will get hung up. And it is a cedar tree, so... It's old, if you can just imagine the old base of a cedar tree with the limbs with nothing on it. That's what's down there. Lay it on the bottom. Just something to collect around. Now if I had a fresh green gum bush in there, it'd be, it'd be really nice. Crap would probably be all over. Might not, you know, it's not gonna be fast and furious. It's a patient type game trying to get that thing and work this deep water crappy fish you got to work at the right spot but you can catch a mess of fish and uh that ain't bad sized crappies well, we got three or four or five places like this we're gonna hit hopefully we can get, make a video uh catching a few i know it's more there there you there you i pulled it up a little bit and he hit it there you pulled it up a little bit and he hit it hey that's a slab too Hey, that's a slab. Look at him. Look at him. About the same size as the other one, I guess. Huh? About the same size as the other one. I got to get me some more doggone monkey milks. That's joking. I have to tear my jig up. A lot of times when you hook them deep like that, I'm going to keep these crappies. I ain't caught none in a while. So I'm going to keep me a mess of these crappies. But uh, you got to split that lip to be able to get that jig 
in that crack to be able to push it back out. Like that. Or you'll tear your jig up. See that? That's what I'm talking about, people. That's what I'm talking about. Crappies. Good pound by pound crappy. Hey, but this lake here holds some whoppers now. This lake here got some three pounders in it. Four pounders. Um, and we might catch a big one in a minute. Who knows? Hey, you're loving this, ain't you? You like the old fishermen doing something different. It's hard for me to leave them fast biting during perch to come out and fight these crappies. But I'm going to tell you one thing. If I would bring me some fresh stuff out here and, put, and, and, and refurbish my spots, I promise you we could show y'all how to catch some crappies. But I think they're on the comeback in Lake Monticello. That's what I think. People ain't fishing for them like they used to. I haven't been fishing for them like I used to. The last couple years, they ought to be built back. That's what I'm thinking. Get back up here to a little spot. I got the, the buoy. I always throw the buoy off upwind from the brush. Because you got to hold up uh, the wind. You got to hold it. So you don't want to be on top of your buoy. So I always throw it about 25, 20 feet in. Have 15, 18, 20 feet away from your spot. And use it as a reference to catch these crappies. All right. Right here's the spot. Let's see if we can get another. Crap is up. White perch is down. If I let it at the bottom, I'll probably catch a white perch. That's what I'm thinking. Gotta work it slow. You gotta visualize old school crap is just laying there. And all of a sudden, there comes a little minnow swimming by him, which is my jig. And uh, he'll peck it. But you got to almost hit him in the nose with it in the summertime to catch them. And one time years ago, I could take that jig and just ease it up like that and they'd run up and, and take it. Back when, in the olden day, oh, one hit it right down. He hit it right down, I didn't jerk. Hey, hit it again. That's what they want, they want to raise it. Uh, and then one time I got into them yo-yoing it. If you got that little uh, lead above it and you yo-yo it, bounce it up and it swims back down, up and down, Something bumping it. I don't know if they brim or darn crappies that don't want to bite. God only knows. Been a long time since I got in some fast crappy action here. Man, at one time, it was every time you drop it down, you catch one. Years back. Even the spring, it ain't, it ain't really fast. Low. A lot of times you don't get a bite, you ease it up to the top and then drop it back down. Might change the depth a little bit, okay? One, let it go down. Two, three, four. I'm using braid line, I got a little monofilament on the end of it. I don't normally, back in the olden days, I never used braid line for crabs. I always use four pound tests most of the time. Four pound test. They one hit it right there and I missed it. He hit it. He, they still something there. He hit it. Pull my jig down. See that? But now I got this braid on this rod. Really, I need the four pound test. Mr. Crap, it'd be nice to have on. I'd feel better about it. But if they'll hit this braid, this is a small braid. And I do have a six pound test leader about a foot and a half, about two foot off the end to swivel. Sometimes these crabbies don't want it jerking much. Sometimes you basically catch them when they, uh, you hold it still. That's when they'll hit it. And then sometimes you got to work it, yo-yo it hard for them to take it. In this lake. This is not a normal lake when it comes to crabbies. It never has been. All right, get back up here. Now, I don't see them like I did, so I'm stirring them up. They, they want, now they're not wanting to feed, not wanting to hit. I'd like to catch a limit, though. We liable to have to, you know, you, you get your five or six brush piles like this, and you go from one to the other and, uh, and keep rotating. Sometimes you can catch a good limit of fish about every time. 
but you need your several places because they ain't gonna allow you to kill them at each place. There might be 50 crappers down there, but you might not catch but two or three. And it ain't because they pressured, they ain't pressured, they just, they got wise over the years. What I think. There you go, that's a good one. That's a good one, that ain't no crap. I don't believe that's a catfish, I believe. If that's a crappy, that's one big one. That's all I got to say. Oh Lord, it's a crappy, and that's one big one. It's a big one. It's a big one. It's a big one, look at that. Huh, look at that. Yeah, sometimes them old big crappies pull like a dog on a catfish. Huh, look at that. Look at that, what a crappy. Now that, my friend, is almost a two pound crappy. That, my friend, is a good one. Huh, feels like a love that. What? Hey, dang, I barely had it. I knew that was a good one when it stuck to that. Hey, dang. You gotta love it.